proper axe snap of the wrists within the rotation of the hips can add 50 feet of distance or 15 miles an hour increase in exit speed on a flawed swing. This double pendulum of wrist snap within the hip rotation is a fundamental power in the second level of bat speed. Elite level hitters separate the wrist snap from the wrist rollover, making an impact on the snap portion for maximum power and consistency. Today we have two elite hitters who will talk about their axe snap, but first Abby from our Sports Technique staff demonstrates the drills you can do daily to improve the snap. Start by using the hips to throw and snap the lead arm and wrist to impact. Then throw, extend, and snap the top arm and wrist to the point of contact. Next we combine both hands and use the hips to explode the hands and hammer head to the impact point. We switch to the axe to promote the wrist snap and lining up those knuckles to get a good axe snap to the point of impact, followed by the regular bat drill working all pitch zones. The swing simulator is also an excellent tool to develop the axe snap. <laughs> hey, it only takes a couple minutes to do these drills. If you are serious about improving, do these at least twice a day. I doubt that there's anybody nationally or worldwide that hits the ball as far as this man. Lud, you're 70 now and you're Hitting great and phenomenal shape. Uh, in the winter time, I used to I used to cut a lot of uh, pulp wood and and a lot of firewood, and so I probably swung an axe probably four times more than I've ever swung a softball bat. So do you really separate that snap from the roll on your swing well? Show us like some of the things you do with the axe handle, Lud. Like like first of all, holding it it helps give you that that oval thing that helps you line the knuckles up, right? Right, exactly. Just show us a few things you do with the axe that would relate to hitting a softball. Well, uh, if you're split, if you're splitting chunk wood. Uh, of course you're coming over the top and you're actually snapping them wrists before you hit the before you hit the chunk wood you know what I'm saying so I mean that it really gives you some you know it's, it's mostly down but you, you know, drive like your say, hands and you create that lag and yeah, snap like exactly. Helmer talked about a few weeks ago on the show him and all I, I could never figure out why one tournament you'd have great uh, production home run wise and maybe the next tournament uh, wasn't so good but but setting the angle you know setting your angle back and keeping your, more or less kind of keeping your head, if you look at a lot of the, the home run hitters now in baseball, their swings, when they swing, their head stays back. And launch they, angle's and back. Get, and yeah, their launch angle, angle is back, and they're not, uh, when you get your head out over the front, you, you start lunging at the ball, uh, bad things happen. And anything else, you always feel like you had a nice snap, you don't have, that's something you don't have to work on too much because of all that wood chopping? And I think the wood chopping and, and then, uh, Probably like a lot of other kids back then, if you didn't didn't have anybody to play ball with, I guess you went out and took a lath out of the snow fence and started hitting uh, rocks, picking up rocks and hitting them, you know. So, so and I think uh, also uh, uh, you suggesting uh, uh, taking a little bit longer stride on some of the balls I was skying pretty pretty bad, but uh, like you said, uh, lengthen your stride out a little bit. Uh, the swing kind of came more. Then the swing stays more. Yeah, yes, through. exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, yeah. great, great point. See, I, I try to focus on the middle of the ball, and I think focus is uh, is really a big part of it. Uh, uh, watching that ball out of that pitcher's hand, and, and like I say, really focusing on it, uh, I think makes a big difference. I wait, I wait, I wait. And from lag, I'm trying to get from point A to point B, from this area to this area, and as quick as I can at the last second. You're very, you're very compact. That's exactly what I am. And, and I would say, go back to hear what I say on you, is this, your lag might only be 8 or 10 inches, but the snap is always square, and does it feel like it's an X snap, wrist against wrist, wrist, keep yes. separating the snap from the roll. That is exactly right. right. Yeah. And that way you're always hitting it square. And, but, but there are some guys, Ed, who will come over the top with more of that tomahawk and over snap, but um, you might get a little bit more tap and power, but that's hard to control, isn't it? Bob Waldike's an over-the-top yeah. snapper guy. But when Bob Waldike, again, is looking to hit the long ball, nobody in the country hits the ball any farther than Bobby Waldike. Now, he's a technician that way. He's not, and I love him to death, but he's not a technician to go back the right field line. He's not a guy that's going to dance in the box and go backside. I'm one of those guys that likes to play all fields. And I, I think, again, based on your individual ability and what your team is expecting of you, a lot of different correct answers it's whatever works for you that's a problem with problem and the glory of having to fit these guys like yourself that played major you halsey really all guys are coming on up and, and you only get nine home runs so correct you only have to be almost a more complete player than you were because there are no stadium 
stadium events that is your softball. Absolutely. The best teams are the guys that can catch the fundamental ones in a five-man and the guys that can hit the ball in the park when the nine are gone. Okay. What, what's the worst out you make and why is it? The worst out that you make in you, my you opinion. You personally? The worst out that I would, would make is is... Sometimes I, I try to outthink the game instead of just letting the game come to me because I think I work hard at the special things, gaps and backsides. So sometimes I'll get a little too complacent and I'll try to steer the ball instead of aggressively going with whatever you call situation A or situation B. Do it with aggression. Don't get so complacent that you're such a great hitter that you're trying to steer it over there. If I'm gonna go left center, go at left center at 98 to 100%. Yeah. Don't do it at 72 because you've become complacent because 700 swings later, you think you can do it in your sleep. Just to simplify, we call it two parts of the swing. Your counter rotation, your stride is the bar, which is done about 5%. But the boom, you know, the boom, I always say, has gotta be 90% in order to make everything time. We have it done in a 30th of a second. I think where people over swing is where they take too much bar. You know, they take too long of a I huge agree. stride like your point out before. I so. absolutely agree. And the biggest thing is the mental side. Know what you need to do get before you get in the box. Take a look at the defense. Sometimes we get a little complacent and they give you something and you think, well, I don't need to do that. Stay stay within the system of your team's success, doing what it takes to win. Uh, this thing is great from the minute you, you swing it. You can feel a difference, and especially at the point of contact. I mean, there's such a difference in this bat. And, uh, when you hit it right, it, it does its thing. I mean, it, it just takes off. Um, so love the feel, love love the point of contact on this. And it feels like nothing, I mean, you know, when you make that contact with it. So the only thing that can make it better is if Bogey would let me take this home with me.